Hi, I'm Tom. I'm going to be talking a bit today about worship in my own experience. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what my experience of meeting for worship is and has been over the different times that I've been over my life. I'm going to talk a bit about what difference meeting for worship makes to my life. And I'm going to talk a bit about what I think happens in meeting for worship, um, which is an interesting topic because one of the natures of a genuinely profound religious experience is very difficult to capture in words, but nevertheless I shall give it a go. Um, we have to do the best we can. So my experience of meeting and my experience of worship, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I got to meeting for worship for the first time. I had the standard nominal Church of England upbringing. Um, I went to um, Christmas and Easter services, possibly, every now and again. Um, had some hymns at school, went to the Scouts, did a few church parades, but nothing, nothing particularly, um, nothing particularly organised, and certainly um, nothing that I particularly felt that I was a part of, nothing that I would say, yes, I am a member of this religious group. And, um, and that continued all the way through my childhood. Um, my dad first came to Quaker meetings when I was about 15. He'd um, sent off an inquirer's pack from friend's house, uh, which is a nice little pack that gives you a book and various other things. Um, and he'd done this in, in the early 1970s in response to an advert in the Times. And he'd been once and then went back again later in life um, in the early 80s when I was very small. Um, and then had left another decade before deciding that no, this really was something that he wanted to do. And he started to attend regularly. And I found this whole thing a bit odd. I mean, the idea that my dad went and sat in silence for an hour and somehow this constituted religious worship, I found quite interesting. So I took him up on his invitation to join him at one point. And um, it was a small meeting in York. Um, there was only 15 people there, a nice little circle of chairs in the library at uh, Frygate Quaker Meeting House. And I went and I sat and I admired the patterns in the carpet, and I really couldn't work out what was going on there at all. And after an hour, I thought, well, this obviously works for my dad, so marvellous, but this is not, this is not the religious experience for me. Anyway, I then went off to university, and then um, came out of university, and went to live in Darlington, and had a small spiritual crisis of my own, and realised that there was something that I was looking for. And as a result of that long chain of coincidence involving attending the meeting with my dad, and him taking the inquiries pack back in the early 1970s, I realised that Quakers were out there. And a lot of what I heard about Quakers I found very appealing, and the idea of a non-dogmatic meeting for worship with the option to go and experience God directly and not be told what to believe, I found very appealing. So I thought that I would give this thing another go. So I did, and I, I sent off my own inquiries pack, and I ended up going to a meeting in Newcastle. It was being run by Young Friends General Meeting, which is a a group of Quakers from 18 to 30 odd, and they were on residential weekends, and I went up for the residential weekend. And the first meeting for worship that I went into in Newcastle, I sat in and was profoundly changed straight away. The experience of worship was so much deeper and so much stronger and so much more moving than that that I'd experienced before, I suddenly realised what the point had been all those years ago. It's just the first time it hadn't worked, and the second time it had. And I think that's quite normal, the idea that it doesn't work every time and sometimes it's something you have to get back to. So that's my experience of worship and after that I've been coming regularly ever since. It's been nearly five years in Quakers now. So what difference does meeting for worship make for me? Well, to be honest, it does vary quite a lot. Sometimes it is just a time of stillness and you get to sit and experience a still moment in your week and nothing more profound than that. And sometimes that's what you need, and that's okay. I feel quite comfortable with that. Sometimes you get a powerful sense of connection with yourself, with others, sometimes with God. And that's even more valuable when it happens, which sadly is not every time. And sometimes I find that it's not possible to settle at all. And you spend the entire meeting looking at the carpet and looking at your watch and wondering when this thing is going to end. But at its best, you get a sense of joy. I get a sense of clarity of purpose. And sometimes you get a sense of great insight into the solutions you might have for your problems. There's a wonderful phrase in Quaker Faith and Practice which I find really speaks to me, um, which is that an early friend's experience of worship was that he felt the evil in me weakening and the good raised up. And I have experienced that in worship, the idea that you go in and come out 
a subtly better person for reasons that it's very difficult to explain, but that sense of evil weakening and that sense of coming out filled with goodness. So what is it that happens in Meeting for Worship? Well, to be honest, I don't know. Um, and I don't know many Quakers who would turn around and say, this is what worship is, this is what God is, this is what your connection is. Some people see it as a connection with an external divinity, that there is a God outside who you worship and connect with. Some people see it just as connecting with the divine part of ourselves and with others. I have no idea, but I have become increasingly happy to use the word God to describe that which I connect with in Meeting for Worship. And that's largely as a result of my time spent in Quakers, that the God that... Quaker's experience is different from the kind of stereotypical white man on a cloud God that you otherwise experience. But what I very strongly believe is that it is not important what our choice of words is. That that experience of worship is shared by Quakers. It is our common corporate understanding. And that experience of God is available to you, whatever you choose to call it, be it God or anything else. Thank you.